Hey loves, good morning. I'm Brenna Paxton, your guide to astral and earthly travel and the creator of astraura.com. <laughs> and this morning I wanted to talk to you about something that I've been really going through and thinking a lot about lately, which is how to follow your intuition when everything is up in the air. You know, we all talk about like following our intuition like it's just like an easy thing to do but it can be really confusing right especially because you first have to figure out how to identify for yourself how you feel your intuition where does your intuition live in your body what sensations do you get when your intuition is like going off like hey pay attention to this thing um i think that's different for everyone vaguely slightly potentially perhaps it's a lot different for everyone not just vaguely and um, especially when you take into consideration your different levels of psychic gifts um, I believe that as humans we're all inherently able to really tune in to a more psychic nature um, and really your intuition is a part of that. Your intuition is somewhat psychic, right? I think that when people refer to intuition, it's almost like a, a way to refer to some sort of psychic ability, but in a way that's less intense as saying psychic. It's like psychic light. <laughs> so, you know, there's various types of clairs, clairaudient, claircognizant, clairsentient, clairvoyant, probably the most common one that you've heard of. I'm sure there's another one for clear smelling that I don't know the word for. Um, but man, it would be cool to talk to someone that has that psychic gift. That would be interesting. So clairvoyant is clear seeing. Um, that would mean that you would be getting different visions. I'm definitely clairvoyant. Um, the misinterpretation with that though often I find is that people assume that if you're clairvoyant that means that all the visions you're seeing are literally like an episode of That's So Raven. <laughs> Where she like, you know, stops and has this insane vision of something exactly as it's going to happen in the future. But Clairvoyant is really much more broad than just seeing a vision of exactly what's going to happen in the future. It's the idea that the way you're getting your intel, your intuitive downloads, is through visuals, right? So I get that all the time. Um, visuals are very, very strong for me. Um, you know, and sometimes it's not even necessarily full scenes um of like literally in the daily life what's gonna happen or what is happening sometimes it's even like symbolism i'll get weird floating shapes and um colors for sure a lot of colors and uh it's interesting because it's almost like the images hold this emotional intelligence that i can tap into also so it's not just the visuals on their own, but it's like the visuals are the portal through which I am able to understand what I need to know or what is being downloaded to me or what I need to know intuitively, right? Um, so that's kind of a, a way to explain clairvoyance. Clairsentience is clear feeling. And this is something that's also very strong for me. And that's kind of what I mean by perhaps my clairvoyance and my clairsentience intermix. And that's why I see things, I feel them. Um, so I'd be curious if anyone out there that listens to this video has experience with clairsentience that feels um, a little bit more um, just clairsentience, like on its own. I don't know if that's even how it works because it's truly different for everyone. Um, so I love hearing how people's intuitions and different psychic gifts kind of come through. Um, it's so fascinating. But clairsentience really, I think especially 
I suppose I do have it at times without the visuals where I'll be talking to someone or I'll tune into someone and I can just feel something so strongly, such a strong emotion. So when we talk about being empaths too, this definitely overlaps with that because it is an empathic thing ultimately. But I think what's um, different between clairsentience and empathy is that clairsentience feels like a more firm um, knowing, whereas empathy might be something that just comes from um, talking to the person or being around them, whereas clairsentience could happen in regards to other situations, other people, people you're not necessarily with. It's more of the idea of truly feeling um, this information that maybe you wouldn't have gotten otherwise if it weren't for these psychic skills. I hope that's a good way of explaining that. <laughs> um, and then there's... Okay, what did I say? Clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, which is clear knowing rather than clear feeling. So I point to the brain, but simultaneously, I think that it isn't necessarily just in your brain. It is like an, an all being knowing of, yes, this is how this is. And I just know that this is what's happening or that this is what's going to happen or that this is what's the underlying motive of that, you know? Um, I have a friend, shout out to Megan Lafota, <laughs> um, who is claircognizant clear in this way. Um, and it's pretty powerful because she just knows certain things. And when, when she knows, she knows. So I trust that. <laughs> and it's proven itself to be true. So that's fascinating. That's not how I operate. So I, my understanding of Claire Cognizance comes from um, my interaction with her. Um, so at some point, I'm gonna have her elaborate on that more in depth, and then I'll share that with you. Um, so besides clairvoyance, Claire Cognizance, Claire Sentience, um, Claire Audience. Did I mention that one earlier? <laughs> Who knows, clear audience is clear hearing. I get that one a lot too, and I love that. This is literally like being a channel, hearing entire sentences come out of you, like hearing words, um, hearing people's voices talking, channeling your guides, um, you know, writing, automatic writing, really like letting it flow through you in the, in, like literally in words or in sound. Um, because maybe the words are a different language from another dimension that are more just like sounds and frequencies. Um, or perhaps there's someone out there, I'm thinking about this too, um, someone who is clairaudient that actually hears like ambient noise or noise that isn't necessarily language that communicates something to them psychically. Hmm, is anyone out there like that? That might be interesting. Um, so we covered clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance, and then clear hearing. As I said, I don't know the, or I'm sorry, clear smelling. <laughs> um, I don't know the word for that. I don't know anyone who has this, but it has to exist, right? Um, so just putting an open call out there if anyone has any info on that. Um, but I would love to hear about how your psychic skills and your intuition comes through you because I find it endlessly fascinating. And it's interesting how sometimes you won't realize what kind of psychic skills you have until you hear someone else explain how they experience it. Um, because it really like, sometimes you don't even realize that you're operating a certain way your entire life or that the way you experience something isn't the way other people experience something um, until that gets articulated and expressed and identified. And then you can kind of go, whoa, what the heck? I experienced things this way and I had no clue that that was special or unique or specific to me. Um, so I definitely associate the most with clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience. Um, 
so that really helps you get a sense of your intuition. It is, as I was saying, not quite as your intuition isn't necessarily as extreme, um, as specific as these different clairs, these different psychic skills. Um, but I do feel that when you have a sense of what your psychic abilities are, you can kind of trickle it down to have a better understanding of how your intuition might show up. So for me, I have to really trust my feelings, that clear sentience piece. Um, I have to ride the wave of my emotions. That also comes into play because I'm a human design projector with my, an emotional authority. So that's also very much there. Um, but my emotions provide an incredible amount of intel and data for me um, to go off of, especially because I have learned how to differentiate between these astral emotions that are much more profound and and I've learned how to separate that from earthly emotions that are, are fleeting or passing or are giving me clues about my fears and my triggers. That is not necessarily my intuition, those types of feelings. Um, my intuition is more those astral emotions that I can feel on a very profound level rather than just... Uh, less profound level I don't know how to explain it there's more gravity to the astral emotions they resonate more deeply and when I feel those I know that it is my intuition and that it's usually going to lead me always going to lead me in the right direction so when everything is up in the air when life has an unexpected trajectory which it always does fyi we don't really have any control paradox god everything's a paradox i love it we both have an immense amount of control over our lives and no control over our lives simultaneously i'll go into that another day but we never know what's going to happen even if we have psychic abilities um we all have free will. Any amount of information you take in is going to alter the course that you are going on, um, like with the path you're going down. So if you have um, a clear view of where you're going, um, often, especially if that is an intuitive knowing of where you're going, that could be true, but you don't necessarily know how the path will unfold to get there. And we can do our best to try and understand what that path could be. And we could also try to plan what that path should be. But ultimately, it's going to unfold in the way that it needs to unfold. And we can't really control that. Um, you know, expect the unexpected is very accurate. Especially in relation to pursuing your own unique path. Um... And so the, the more we're able to trust that the unexpected is the path, then when something unexpected pops up, it doesn't feel like it's completely knocking us off course um, or getting us really like bent out of shape over, oh no, the plan isn't unfolding as I expected. Because we understand that when the unexpected happens, that's when we know we're being led down the right path. Which is kind of crazy. Um, so when we don't have this clear understanding of how that path is going to unfold, because we can't necessarily know, but especially when the destination is also more vague than maybe you're used to. So to just be completely honest and transparent here, like I'm at this stage in my life where a lot of seeds that I have planted many, many years ago, um, and continuously been planting these seeds, uh, metaphorically, uh, energetically, of things that I know I'm meant to pursue, and it is my destiny, perhaps, or um, purpose to 
pursue these specific things. These are the, the seeds that I've been planting over time. And I'm now in a phase of my life where these seeds are growing and blooming and blossoming and um, coming into reality, coming into fruition, um, dare I say, manifesting in a very specific way. I can tell that all the work I've been doing for years and arguably my entire life has led up to what is unfolding for me right now. And because of that, my destination, my, my more, I, I really understand where I'm going in the really big picture, but in terms of like right now, it's the end of November, what's January or February gonna look like? Like, I don't really have that fixed, this is what I'm doing then, and this is how it's gonna look, and this is how it's gonna happen. Um, I know how I'm getting there, vaguely, intuitively, I'm following these seeds that are growing. Um, I'm following that unexpected path, but I know that it is so unexpected that I can't even see what's about to happen. So um, I hope I'm communicating that all right, because there definitely is a difference, right, between like, um, you should always have kind of your North Star in mind. You should always have a clear focus on like where your soul is pointing you. And that's your North Star. And that will guide you through everything. And really I think of my intuition as the way that that North Star and I communicate. So that North Star is guiding me through the darkness, through this path, um, and darkness being the unknown, um, through potential fears, um, through potential challenges, guiding me closer to that star, guiding me in the correct direction for my own specific path and purpose. Um, so it's always important to have your eye on that star and to, and to really feel a true genuine connection with that star um, but sometimes that star you know leads you in a way where you can maybe figure out what the next three years are gonna look like pretty well like maybe you're working at a specific job so you know that this is gonna be this way and you're living in this town and this is what you're doing and here's how some things are gonna unfold here are some plans that I have up ahead um, some things scheduled or something maybe and you can kind of see what the trajectory is a little bit more clearly but sometimes like what I'm experiencing now um, everything truly is open to possibility and um, it could go any direction um, and I have to say I guess I'm being kind of cryptic because I quit my corporate job at the end of August, it's now the end of November, and I'm self-employed. And I've done this before. There was a time um, three years ago, a little over three years ago, where I quit my agency job and um, worked for myself for a few months. And this time is very, very different than last time. And it's because I learned so much the last time um, that I quit a job and worked for myself um, and this time is so drastically different that I think that's really like what I'm wanting to speak about because when you quit your job and you do so in a very aligned way where I, I definitely quit because I could see that these seeds were growing um, and ready to blossom and bloom um, whereas the previous time I quit over three years ago, um, I quit kind of out of desperation. I like need, I had to get some rest. I needed a change. I was super burnt out and I, it felt like my last resort. Like I just had to quit. Um, and so when I quit then in 2016, I really kind of said to myself like, oh, well, I'm following my North Star. Um, I trust that everything's gonna unfold as it should. 
so this is gonna be totally fine. But then I was like so exhausted that I just slept for three months because I had to, which was great. I'm so grateful that that happened um, and that I could do that. Um, but it also did not unfold in the way I expected and it created a lot of fear for me because I went into this like panic desperation mode of like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do next? Like, what, what do I do now? Like, what's happening? Like, how do I take care of myself and make, wow, sorry, spam, a spam call just called me out of nowhere, you know, gotta love those. So interrupted my little flow there. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> when I was in that state of fear, from not knowing like what was about to unfold, it sent me into a panic that really like shut my shut down my ability to truly connect with my intuition, to um, do what I needed to do, to be creative, to be in spiritually um, aligned, perhaps is the right word here. Um, it's almost like my fear knocked me so far out of alignment that it was pretty impossible to like get my sense of um, direction and intuition and reestablish that communication with my North Star. It was, it was impossible to do that because of how fearful I was, right? So this time, a little over three years later, um, I very intentionally quit my corporate job, um, worked up to it for a long time. I mean, quite honestly, when I took that job, I knew I wouldn't be there forever. I mean, of course, but I was waiting for when I needed to quit because I didn't want to stay, um, overstay the length of time that I was meant to be there which I believe is what I did the previous time. And that's why I had to quit so impromptu um, because I was so burnt out and it felt like my only option. So this time was much more intentional, very planned, very um, in alignment with my intuition. And everything started unfolding super synchronistically. So it was really validating constantly, like over a series of six months or more. Um, that it was the right thing I was going to do. And I had to work through a lot of fears around making sure I wasn't making a mistake or jumping to conclusions and that this is what I wanted to do but maybe shouldn't do. You know, there is a difference between um, following your intuition and being responsible at the same time. And then also that's different from following your intuition but then like being kind of reckless with with the execution of that intuition, if that makes sense, like feeling something, but then not following up with it in a, um, a fully aware way. It's more like if you get some sort of intuitive hit and then you just kind of like jump on it without fully knowing to your core um, what that intuition is leading you towards. I'm skeptical about that statement that I just said that just came out of my mouth because perhaps there are people out there that can operate in a way that I can't because we're different types of people. So perhaps some people, their intuition as soon as they get it and it is that clear knowing or something, they can just immediately act on it and it will be correct. Um, I'm not saying I can't immediately act on my intuition. I can, but certain situations, um, that are bigger or with more gravity or something, um, big life changing decisions. I spend more time for myself really connecting to that intuition, um, more fully so I can get a really good grasp of what I need to do and what's happening. So I did that. Um, this time that I quit and um, I made a commitment to myself before quitting and I kind of I, I got to this point of commitment with myself before I ever um, 
like told anyone I was quitting, like put in my notice, um, which was to make sure that I would not fall into fear even when everything was uncertain, like I did the last time. Because the last time that, that happened, it made me shut down so much that it was not helpful, it was not productive, it was just like panicked fear. And that, that's the, the quickest way to shut yourself off from the direct connection to source and your intuition. So I knew I was basically not allowed to quit my job until I had completely gotten over the fear of the unknown. Like, really gotten over it. And perhaps gotten over it isn't the right phrase because it's not something you just push aside and get over. It's something that you have to go to the depths of in terms of like, why does that fear exist for you? What beliefs is that pointing you to? Where did you learn this? How long have you been learning this? Um, arguably, probably your whole life. Um, what needs to be reprogrammed within you in order to remove yourself of the grip of that fear? And truly, this is the concept of leaving the um, matrix world where everything is based on fear and transcending that to get to another place where we can build this whole new world together that is based on something entirely different, which is truly unconditional love and abundance. And uh, I hope that doesn't sound too trite because those are words people throw around a lot, but I do mean them in the most profound sense. So for me to feel like I could quit my job and go into the unknown and really pursue the seeds I had planted over many, many years that were starting to bloom and grow and blossom, I knew that the only way it would unfold in the way that it needed to was if I got out of the way by making sure that I wouldn't allow any sort of fear programming to take over my being. That was crucial and that is crucial. So I think that's what I'm trying to talk to you about today. Um, and just kind of what's been on my mind is how much different it is for me this time than before because I don't have, I no longer feel, feel that I'm operating from this fear program that I previously had. And it took me honestly three years, three years of very, very diligent work removing the fear programming from myself. So I'm not saying it just took three years to get to this spot. It took my entire life to get to this spot. But I intentionally focused on that one specific problem of I want to be removed from this fear matrix. I cannot operate in this fear matrix any longer. And my whole success, um, and success, by success I just mean my ability to pursue my North Star and embody the truth and wisdom um, that I need to embody on this earth in service to others. That's what I mean by success. Um, in order for me to do that, I could tell intuitively because I had that established form of communication um, with my guides, my North Star, um, my vision, my truth, my eternal self, my purpose, not that all those are the same things, but they're like dancing around the same topic, right? Um, I knew because they told me, <laughs> because I knew that that was the one thing I was really tasked with like, you must remove this now. You must remove yourself from this fear matrix and you need to focus on it and you need to, to do it now. It's gonna take you a while. And once you have freed yourself from that, you will be able to continue this path um, in a very profound way. So even that was a part of the path, but it was like 
what I needed to do in order to allow it to be go time to really like go after what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, so that was really my intention and my focus for almost a solid three years, the whole time that I was working in this last job. So I think that's what I mean when I say that I knew I was gonna quit eventually. What I actually mean by that is I got that job as a way to no longer feel the fear I was feeling because it supported me in a certain way that then allowed me to do the work I needed to do in order to heal myself so that I could be removed from that fear matrix and that I could break out of that fear matrix. So I knew that when I finally felt that I was breaking out of that fear matrix on a very true, genuine level, like for real, real talk, <laughs> um, breaking out of that, that's when I knew I would be allowed to quit and leave. And as that started approaching, um, all of these other things started synchronistically falling into place, validating that it was time for me to move on over a series of six months. So after the six months of that, while I was building and um, allowing those synchronistic things falling into place, kind of building on them and seeing how those things were the um, manifestation of dreams and desires and those planted seeds from very early on, um, that was the validation for me that yes, I'm going on the path I'm supposed to be on and I'm now ready and free of this fear to be able to quit my corporate job and own both the sovereignty um, of myself as a fully embodied, integrated human being, but also with that, the responsibility that comes with being sovereign. So the phase I'm in right now is where it feels like this in-between phase where everything is about to bloom, everything is about to unfold, and I feel it very strongly. And what is paired with this, that is something that was not easy for me when I was younger because I'm so like in my head, in the clouds floating, in the astral planes, um, totally like in other dimensions all of the time. I don't, in the past, I haven't typically been very good at like being on earth. And I mean, I love it, but I haven't been as good as bringing the, these higher realm things down physically manifested into physical form tangibly on earth and everyone using the phrase manifest right now makes this sound convoluted because what I mean manifest really means to to make real so to take something that is up here and to bring it into the physical that's what manifest means so before I would be so up here that I wasn't doing the action steps required to bring it into the physical. And action steps in the physical dimension are required to make something up here physical because you have to merge the physical and the spiritual. And the way to make that spiritual physical is by doing something physical, right? So there's like other elements to it too, of course, but that's the main part that I was really like accidentally not even fully aware that I was not doing that half of the equation I would like see the whole vision see how it is I'm used to living in a high dimension where I have an idea and then the thing exists I don't have to do anything to make it exist so I've had to learn on earth how if I have this idea up here I have to follow certain action steps while bringing that down so the first time I quit also, that was one of the things is that I had all of this fear and I was like, why isn't everything manifesting? And I mean that in like the less accurate way of saying it of like, why isn't everything being attracted to me right this second? And also why isn't what I expected to happen happening? Because I was just up here. I wasn't doing the action steps required in order to bring the esoteric, magical, energetic realm into the physical. 
so then pair that with the fear and panic I was feeling and like you can see why I needed to go get a job <laughs> I like whew, I needed to just like fall back on something so then I could figure some stuff out um, and for the record that job was totally in the path totally in alignment it was awesome I learned so much from it so you know it's one of those things where it's like that was one of those unexpected plot twists where that was in my path and when I wanted to get that job I kind of beat myself up and felt a lot of shame over like oh no I failed why am I going back to a job no no that was in my path it was important I have no shame about that now it was perfect so don't shame yourself for anything that happens in your path you know like the path is your path <laughs> and it's meant to be so we just have to keep going with it and learning from it and growing and taking it to the next level and evolving and um, so I guess I was saying that like now I just am actually and like within those six months where everything was getting validated I wasn't just letting it be validated like oh another intuitive thing is happening oh, oh weird that's synchronistic wow and just like being like, wow, yeah, this is a sign I'm going to quit. No, I was like following up with these things. Like, oh, this opportunity is arising. Let me pursue that. Let me do some actual tangible physical things to get closer to this goal, um, to see how that's going to unfold. Um, and I did that a lot. I did that for many months. And um, that truly felt like gardening, like tending to my garden of seeds that were now growing, of pulling out weeds, of... And really, maybe you could think of it as those three years where I was removing myself from that fear matrix. I was like weeding the garden to allow these gar these things that I had planted to finally have space to grow without being suffocated by weeds. I like that example. That's totally accurate. <laughs> um, so now I'm in this space where I don't know what's about to happen, but it's gonna be awesome. I can tell you that much. And the next month might be a little iffy. You know, it's the end of the year. Um, not, I'm not. I have a lot of clients um, and things like lined up for January, um, but for December, you know, we're all kind of on vacation, like chilling, hanging out with family, finishing your stuff up at the end of the year. Um, so that's kind of an unknown spot for me. And I think um, in my past, I would have freaked out about it. But this time I feel no fear at all. And um, I truly think that it comes down to an understanding of what you have control over and what you don't. And we all have these like illusions of control that um, we think that, um, you know, being at a job where someone pays you a regular, on a regular basis to do what they want you to do, that feels like secure to people. And um, to people that seems like the responsible decision maybe. And for some people it probably is, like if it's aligned with you, that's great. Um, but we have no control over like if we keep that job, like if we're going to be able to stay at that job, if that company is going to be able to keep paying us, like we don't really know what, what's going to unfold ever, even in these situations where traditionally people think of them as like super secure. Um, so ironically, right after I put my resignation letter in for my job, there was a big round of layoffs. And um, no one from my team was laid off. And we were even kind of joking like, oh, Brenna, you saved us. Like someone might've been laid off from our team had you not already chosen to leave. And maybe that wasn't true, um, but it's weird to think about, right? There was like a bunch of layoffs. And so a bunch of people who thought they were doing the secure thing um, that felt like the most like stable and controlled um, was suddenly not secure at all. So really, I understand that the most secure thing I can do is to be a sovereign being 
and to take responsibility for myself and how I'm able to make a living and um, to be in flow with the universe, <laughs> with the divine flow of life and to co-create with that by being very in tune with that North Star and holding that as the, the one thing that feels secure. Like the one thing I can trust is my truth. That's the only thing I can trust or plan on or expect in all of life um, is source, is divine unconditional love and truth from source. Um, and that's always consistent. That's the only thing that's consistent. I don't know if I've ever really like said that out loud in that way, but it's true. Um, and I think that's what I mean too by like each person has their own North Star. So I'm not saying that each person has their own um, totally different life that we're living in, um, world that we're living in. Like we are co-creating with each other. So things do overlap, but everyone does have their own truth. And that truth, if it's really truth, it is source energy. It is source consciousness. And that is oneness, the one thing that we can rely on. So I understood and I have been understanding that the only thing I can rely on is that. And if I can remove everything else that's in the way um, of allowing me to fulfill what source is guiding me to do, then that's what I need to be doing. That's what I can rely on. That's what I can trust. That's secure. And that is what makes me not succumb to that fear matrix because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if I hold that North Star and that truth as the one secure thing, then I'm not in this illusion of other things being secure when they're actually insecure. So I'm not going to be triggered as easily by that fear programming of not having um, a ton of money come in one month. That's not going to trigger me in the same way because I understand how things are unfolding and how things are growing and blooming. Um, that's not going to trigger me in the same way now as it would before when money felt like the ultimate security. Now source is my ultimate security. And just that difference, though a simple difference, also took me three years to fully embody very intentionally. Um, that difference is what makes it so that I can follow my intuition without fear or panic, even though I have no clue what's about to happen. It's funny how I always think I'm gonna like tell you this thing and it's gonna be so quick. Like, oh, I'm just gonna sit down, just woke up in my pajamas, drinking some tea. I'm just gonna tell you this thing real quick. It'll take 10 minutes. Never, I'm so long-winded. But I hope that's a perspective that just makes you think about something helpful. <laughs> and let me know your thoughts. I'm definitely curious. Um, and I'll keep you updated. Cause this is an ongoing journey for me, you know, and I just kind of wanted to let you in on what I'm doing right now and what's happening and how I'm feeling about it and what's about to happen next. Who knows? So I'll keep you posted, but I hope you guys have a really lovely day. I love you friend. <laughs> See you later.